What up, bitches? Welcome back to Law of Attraction Changed My Life. I am your host, Francesca Amber, and today we are doing a slightly different kind of episode. I actually can't remember if I've ever done one of these before, but if I haven't, I'm surprised. Anyway, today we are doing a Christmas gift guide either for yourself or for somebody in your life who is into the same kind of weird witchy shit that we're into, okay? That's what this is gonna be. So I am so not up this year for filling my home with useless clutter and buying for the sake of buying. And I think especially when you have kids, you want them to have stuff to unwrap and be excited about, right? But I think we can all be guilty of going a little bit to excess and not knowing when to say stop and also buying things that maybe are not in alignment with how we want to be living our lives. So I I feel a little bit ashamed saying this actually, but there are a couple of presents that I've bought for the girls either last Christmas or their birthdays this year, which they still have in the box unplayed with or like not used so I am actually going to (laughs) I'm going to rewrap and repurpose those presents that may sound crazy but I'm going to do that so last Christmas was actually the first Christmas where the babies were away from us and it was just me and Bo on our own and I had a last minute panic that Christmas was going to be really shit for her and I bought like this hoverboard thing with like an attachment that makes it into a little go-kart but I didn't have time to get someone to put it together and it basically has sat in a box behind my sofa all year long so you best believe I'm getting a handyman out to put that shit together I'm going to charge it and have it together ready to go on Christmas morning and if she says isn't this from last year I'll be like yes you're welcome Merry Christmas um likewise the little babies for their birthday this year I got them these little um toy hamsters that like rolled around in a little ball the birthday was so full on, we never actually got to put the batteries in them and play with them. So I'm going to take them out of their packaging, I'm going to put batteries in. And I've got like this little box that somebody sent me like some gifts in that has like, you know, like the shredded paper in. And I'm going to put them in there and be like, here's like two little hamsters, completely different packaging. They won't fucking know. So that's the vibe I'm on this year is really being intentional with The items that I bring into my home, because I think that so many of us are drowning in both physical and mental clutter in our lives. The clutter in our lives can quite often be what is holding us back from manifesting what we want. And so I do not want to spend my time and energy editing my home and editing the things that I own only to just bring all that shit back in and also to be very intentional with my time and my money. So part of money mindset work is honouring your money and being intentional with it. And I really don't want to waste money buying shit for the sake of it. So this view is partly thanks to the book that I'm currently reading, which is Calm Christmas and a Happy New Year. (laughs) I'm absolutely obsessed with this book. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, if you're not following me, what are you doing with your life? I'm at Francesca Amber and at Law of Attraction Changed My Life. You'll know that I have been really obsessed with this book. I have been having some very cosy evenings, getting into bed early, putting my lamps on, getting super snuggly and just devouring this book. And the author, Beth Kempton, encourages us to be more intentional about the kind of Christmas that we want to have. And if you think about it, the reason that we buy excess stuff is because we think it's going to bring us happiness, right? Or we think it's going to bring happiness to those around us. But quite often it does the exact opposite. If we have a home full of rubbish and wrapping paper and plastic toys, we often feel really overwhelmed and like we need to clear up and spend our time and energy doing that. But in reality, what will bring us joy, particularly with our children, but with anyone really, is to spend intentional quality time playing games, doing things together, connecting. And so by having less and making the time to actually do more. Yeah, that's it. Do more, buy less. You're going to have a much more joyful Christmas. So I just wanted to read you a little passage from this book, Calm Christmas. And if you're into this kind of shit, 
I love this book so much that we are actually doing it in my book club in December. So we start reading this on the 1st of December and it kind of guides you through how to have a really calm and peaceful and intentional Christmas season, building up to Christmas, Christmas Day itself and afterwards. And if you are somebody who has experienced a negative Christmas where afterwards you're like, well, that did not live up to my expectations or you had sadness or disappointment or anger or whatever, this book is for you because that is exactly what I experienced last year. Anyway, let me read you this little passage. Christmas is considered so important that we max out our credit cards to the tune of £11 billion each year in the UK, while people in the United States shell out a staggering $1 trillion. So it's hardly surprising that almost two thirds of us find the holiday season stressful. Indeed, the mental health charity Mind recently reported that 11% of people feel unable to cope at Christmas. And 28% of people struggle with the pressure of organising the perfect Christmas. Year in, year out, millions of people approach it in the same old way. Huge build-up, mounting panic, followed by a massive energy crash. Even those of us who adore Christmas often take on far too much, giving everything to others and leaving nothing for ourselves. Many of us are missing a vital opportunity to relax, reconnect and be rejuvenated by this very special season, simply because of what we have come to believe about how it should be. It's time for a new kind of festive season, one that allows us to create magic and memories without sacrificing our own well-being, ushering us towards a lasting sense of serenity and contentment. So today I have curated this quite short list of items that I think would make excellent gifts either for yourself because yes I am a fan of giving myself gifts (laughs) I really love that I look forward to the gifts to myself more than I do anybody else to be honest and all those around you so I hope you enjoy this and also I just want to read you one more thing from this book before we go right when you're thinking about what you want to buy for people for Christmas Think about who you can edit from that list. And Beth Kempton quotes in this book this excellent video, which I'm sure you all saw a couple of years ago. It's really like doing the rounds on social media. And this was from the money saving expert, Martin Lewis. Fun fact, one of my earlier crushes. Um, And he encouraged people to stop buying gifts for anyone outside their immediate family. And this, this is what he said, right? Many people feel obliged to buy gifts for others that they know they won't use with money they don't have and cause themselves stress they don't need. Giving can actually be selfish. It can misprioritise people's finances and create a financial burden. It's time for us to get off this gift giving treadmill. I think sometimes the best gift you can give is releasing others from the obligation of having to give to you. Less pressure, less cost, less debt and more joy. By releasing yourself from all of those unnecessary gift-giving obligations to distant relatives, children of friends and everyone in the office, for example, you can do your bank account a big favour and give a priceless gift to a large group of people who no longer feel obligated to buy for you. Oh Lord, I am 100% on board with that. Do you know what? My childhood friends got into this thing of like buying all of each other's children presents and I just refused to fucking get involved I was like nah kids have too much shit as it is like I am not getting down with that so anyway I hope that you can go into this festive season perhaps releasing a couple of people from your Christmas gift list and that in turn releases them from the financial and time obligation of buying something for you it might be the best news you've received all year and I hope that the presents you do buy are intentional and are gonna connect you and bring you closer together which brings me on to the first item on my list so I actually found this whilst randomly searching stuff about uga whenever I say that word I always feel like I have to pause first uga uga you know what I'm saying h-y-g-g-e the Danish art of like snuggliness coziness you know it about it so there's a uga game right and it's a little card game you can get it from Amazon I'm going to leave all the links for all of these items down below in the show notes so check it out if you want to go directly to the items themselves and I am all about this life so I've talked a couple of times in the book club about this book that my ex-husband and I bought in LA years and years and years ago. And it's called something like 
4,000 questions to get to know everyone and anyone. And I have searched for this book online. I don't know what fucking crazy bookstore we got this in, but it no longer exists online. You can't buy it. And it is the best book ever. And I still keep it in the front seat of my car for long car journeys. And Bo will quite often pick it up on a long car journey and ask me, questions about my life that give me like an existential crisis. So it's it's a great book. And I love anything that is like a conversation starter. So recently, Stephen Bartlett started, um, are they called the conversation cards? Is that what his new venture's called? But that shit, you can't get it for love nor money. You have to basically be on this really long waiting list. But I truly don't believe you need to wait for Stephen Bartlett. There's already so many great versions out there. And it's great when you are gathering with a group of people that maybe you get into a bit of a stuck in a rut where, I don't know, maybe you always argue about politics with your dad or your mum just talks about what's on fucking EastEnders. I don't know. And it can be really nice to have a couple of little conversation starters. That's about stuff you wouldn't normally speak about. So, so the Yuga game, cosy conversation in pleasant company game is all about bringing people together by encouraging friends and family to share their stories and bond over discussions of the big and small things in life. The game has more than 300 thought-provoking questions designed to spark meaningful conversation and create the right atmosphere for an eager evening. Perfect for a night in, a small party or a dinner with friends and family. So I picked out a couple of questions just to give you an example because they do not show this on the Amazon listing. So... The examples of questions are, um, what is the best motivator? Fear, money or love? Not counting a house or car, what is the most expensive thing you have ever bought? If you could go back and relive one day in your life, what day would it be? And are there any pictures of you? (laughs) that you would prefer to see destroyed. Um, So when was the last time you asked your mum or you spoke to your children, if you've got more sort of grown up children, about things like this? It would spark such interesting discussions. And I have to say, like, I really wish that I'd had this game when my nan had been alive because I think it could have sparked some really interesting conversations. So that is my first item. One of my intentions for 2024, because yes, she's already thinking ahead, is just more connection all the time, more connection with my family, more meaningful connection with my children. And that doesn't mean just spending time with them. It means having meaningful connection, uh, having more meaningful connection with my friends. And I truly believe a gift like this would really help with that. It also helps that I'm currently obsessed with Uga because we are in the depths of winter. And that brings me to my book list. So I couldn't do a Christmas gift list without mentioning some amazing books I think would make incredible gifts for friends or family or yourself or yourself. Now, I've purposely chosen books that we have not done in the book club. I am purposely choosing books that I've not really talked about before that have nothing to do with the law of attraction directly. So these are books that I'm just fucking obsessed with. So the one that I am reading recently, I've been curling up in bed at night early reading this under the covers by soft lighting and it's been truly a dream. And it is called my Uga Home, How to Make Home Your Happy Place. And this is by Mike Viking. And he has a couple of different books all about Danish ways of life. And I'm just obsessed with this book. I can't tell you how warm and cozy it makes me feel. I can't tell you how motivated it makes me feel to create spaces in my home that feel really relaxing and really inviting. It's a beautiful coffee table book. It's hardback. Check it out. The next book I have to mention, of course, is Calm Christmas, the one that I just quoted at the top of this episode. This book is so lovely and would help so many people that find the Christmas season really overwhelming or perhaps don't even find it overwhelming, just want more from their Christmas. And like I said, we will be doing this in the book club. The next book I have to recommend is called The Women's Circle by Anushka Florence, How to Gather with Meaning, Intention and Purpose. This is another beautifully written book. I searched this out after attending my first women's circle and finding it such an incredible, magical experience that I just wanted to find out more about what women's circles were and and what we could stand to gain from them. And this book was such a joy to read. So I'll just read you a little bit of the blurb. The Women's Circle is your practical guide to hosting women's circles with intention, purpose and meaning, making them a healing and empowering experience of gathering community. 
Seeking to remember the tradition of the women's circle, this book will help you revive and reclaim this ancient feminine practice, illustrating the benefits, healing and magic that occurs when women gather. Now, this book is kind of a guide on how to host your own women's circle. However, I got to say, I have no intention of hosting a women's circle and I still really enjoyed reading about it. If you love reading about the history of women gathering and being witches and the red tent and all that vibe, you're going to fucking love this. The next book on my gift list is Sacred Seasons by Kirsty Gallagher. Now, this has only recently come out, I feel like, although she's just released another book. So how is this bitch writing these books so quickly? I don't know. But this is nature inspired rituals, wisdom and self-care for every day of the year. This book is really designed to reconnect you with nature's rhythms to live a happier, more intentional life with sacred seasons. You'll learn about the wheel of the year and the best moments to pause and reflect and look inwards. And you know what? The more I learn about cyclical living and the seasons and the moon and everything else, the more I feel myself being pulled into it. This time last year, I had a lot going on. I moved house just before Christmas, which is one of the most stressful things you can do, right? And it was one of the first Christmases I didn't have the babies with me. And the whole period was awful. And it got so, so bad. I kept trying to push myself forward, push myself forward. And it ended up with me having a bit of a burnout or breakdown in February of last year. So you probably don't remember, but like February, March last year, I actually took a month off work and I just did nothing because I was not coping with life very well at all. And as I start to learn more about cyclical living and seasons, I find myself feeling the same right now. Like I find myself feeling not very motivated to do a lot of stuff and just wanting to be cozy and just to kind of rest. I just want to rest. And whereas in the past, and I'll admit, even now, I really try and fight against that. I'm now trying to sort of use the wisdom that is being given to me and the wisdom of the universe to sort of say, no, this is perfectly normal. In fact, this is how we are designed to be. So if you're interested in learning more about cyclical living and seasons and stuff, Sacred Seasons is a great book to really kind of ease you into that whole area. Okay, I've included a couple of coffee table books because you know people love to have coffee table books out on display. And I'm going to tell you one of my icks, okay? I'm really, really sorry if this is you, but this is one of my icks. I hate it when people like completely renovate their house, right? And they have like an Instagram worthy house. We all know the ones. We all know the home accounts that we're talking about. We all know and love them. And then they have coffee table books that are like Chanel, Louis Vuitton. That's my ick. I can't stand it. I've got to tell you, I I can't stand (laughs) each to their own, but I fucking hate it. But I am a fan of having big coffee table books out where you naturally kind of sit and gather. Because I tell you what, every time I go to my sister's house, she has the same fucking books. Nushka, if you're listening to this, switch those three fucking books up because I want more to read. But as I'm sitting there on the sofa, I end up just picking up the same book again and again and reading it because it is so lovely just to sit and relax and have a little read. So I'm not hating on coffee table books. I'm just hating on like the Chanel and Louis Vuitton ones. Okay. So there's a great couple I'm going to suggest to you. Number one, The Monocle Book of Gentle Living. This is a beautiful book. My friend actually put it on her stories. She was walking through Amsterdam one day and she saw it and I was like, I need that book. It is a bright orange canvas bound book. It looks beautiful and the inside is just as wonderful. It's got loads of tips and stories on how to live slower and be more intentional. And I'm all about that life. And my second coffee table book recommendations are the Soho House collection. So they actually have a little collection of these of three. The first is Eat, Drink, Nap, Bringing the House Home. The next is City, Country, Coast, Our House, Your Home. And the final one is Morning, Noon and Night, A Way of Living. These are all, again, beautifully presented, different coloured, canvas covered books and they're just really aesthetically pleasing for your coffee table. So check those out. I'll leave all the links below. Now, I couldn't do a Christmas gift guide without mentioning my own products, could I? Truly. So I actually have something rather special for you. And this is only available to people that have listened to this episode. So I am going to offer you guys a huge 50%, yes, 50% half price 
off of all necklaces and all planners on my website because I'm looking at how I want to take my life and my business forward in 2024. And whenever you're looking to manifest anything, you first need to look at what you can edit from your life, what you can release from your life. Because if we're constantly just adding new things, but not releasing anything, we're going to get dragged down. We're going to like sink to the bottom of the proverbial lake. And so to move forward in life, we really need to cut the ties of the things that are holding us back. And for me, something that I consciously want to release is my physical products. Now, this may sound crazy because they sell really well. You know, I have a whole warehouse that deals with this. I have people that send this stuff out on a daily basis. I have so many amazing, happy customers that are wearing the gratitude necklaces every day and that swear by the planners. And that's all great. But one reason is like environmental. I kind of would like to just have an entirely digital platform where I just I'm not responsible for packaging or things being shipped around the world. And another thing is just it does take up space. Despite the fact that I don't physically do it, you know, it's now outsourced to a warehouse and people deal with it. It still takes up space in my heart and my mind. I still know it's there. I know it's still something that I'm responsible for. And so it is with great sadness that I tell you that from January, we will no longer be selling any physical products. The planners, the necklaces, they're gone. They ain't coming back. The only place you will ever be able to purchase them in the future is when I do live events and live retreats or whatever, then I will take some with me, but I will not be selling them on my website anymore. So if you want to get the daily or weekly planners, which quite honestly have changed my fucking life, then now is your time to get them because they are 50% off. Now, you don't need to worry about me because I've got a stock of these in my house. So I'm good. I'm going to be fine for at least the next 10 years. But if you only have one to your name, you better get some more because they will be gone before you know it. The necklaces, absolutely massive fan of these. I have been wearing gratitude necklaces ever since the day that I invented them. And I came up with the idea, um, God, about four years ago now. And what started off as one gold necklace that said thankful has now grown into a huge collection of more than six affirmations in silver, gold and rose gold and many different designs. So out of all the ones there, I'm sure you'll find one that you love. And this might be your chance to grab a little piece of Law of Attraction Changed My Life history because this was the first thing that I ever really that I ever really sold. This is the first thing that started to get me a little bit of money in after the old pandemic. So get one before they go. Again, a massive 50% off. Do you know, we don't even do 50% off on Black Friday. And I don't want you to tell anyone else about this. This is just for the listeners of the pod. I'm not going to advertise this on my social media. I'm not going to put it anywhere. This is just for pod listeners. So necklaces, planners, get them before they go. Now, speaking of necklaces, I got a beautiful necklace recently from a lovely website called Moon Magic, and they do beautiful high-end jewellery. It's not the cheapest. It's very good quality. That incorporates crystals and gemstones into them. So they do your zodiac, like your star constellation for whatever star sign you are. And again, they do these in silver, gold and rose gold. But this ain't no £33.33. This is not FrancescaAmber.com prices. This is Benny Bitches prices, okay? £189. But I got one recently and I absolutely love it. I personally layer mine with my gothic gold um, blessed necklace, which I feel like is very Courtney K 90s vamp wedding vibes. And I absolutely love that look. So check that out. And whilst we are on the subject of crystals, why not head over to good old canny crystals, your go-to bitch for all things crystal, and check out what they have in the way of Christmas gifts. He does a water bottle, which is like a big... I hate saying the word shaft, but I don't know what other word. A big shaft of crystal inside. I got a rose quartz one and you fill it up with water and your water is literally like fucking energized and rebalanced by the fucking crystal. What more could you want? And it's all glass as well. No plastic. So I personally think that would make an amazing present. And finally, I've just written a note here for something you could give the children in your life, something you could give them that would encourage more sort of connection and quality time together rather than just giving them a load of 
plastic shit. So the first thing I've got down is the Big Life Journal. Now, Big Life Journal sent me the kids edition and the adults edition. And I have to say, the kids edition, I've absolutely loved doing with Bo. So we keep this book. And every time we go out to a restaurant when it's just me and her, we take it with us because I think it's a lovely thing to do. Because you know what kids are like? They're not just going to sit and converse with you over dinner for like an hour. I don't know, maybe your children do, but mine don't. They need a little bit of prompting sometimes. And so it's a lovely little book to prompt some questions and find out what's going on in her life and what she's kind of thinking. So big life journal, big fan of that. And going along that intentional kind of connection theme, I bought Bo Junior Scrabble and Junior Pictionary last year. And I'm ashamed to say that we haven't really played them very much yet. And that is mostly because it is impossible <laughs> to play board games when the twins are there. But I really want to make an intention to have and to host kids board games nights, whether this is with her cousins or with her friends, I'm not really sure. But I really want to do board game nights. I think it would be super fun. It would be super cute. It'd be such a nice little tradition to do maybe once a month. I don't know. Um, and so Junior Scrabble, Junior Picture, they're both really fun games that would be perfect for that. And finally, this is a little bit random because it doesn't really have anything to do with the law of attraction. But you know, when you find something really amazing, you're like, I've got to share this. For Bo's birthday, I bought her a grabber machine, you know, like a claw machine because she is obsessed with them. She's like a goddamn magpie. If she sees one of those at like a beach resort or something, she is straight over there trying to put my money in to try and win some piece of tat. Well, it turns out you can buy little miniature versions of these to have at home. And my God, was it an absolute winner. Now we're talking between 40 and 60 pounds, but hear me out. This is the gift that keeps on giving. So the one I got, again, I'm going to link all these below, had little plastic balls in it, which you could open and I put sweets inside them and they had like these little soft toys as well which they could pick up my girls played with that non-stop for the whole of Bo's birthday it's the one toy that they played with all day long and anytime that we actually plug it in and put all the things back in and you put the little coin in they absolutely fucking love it now going along this theme of like repurposing things for Christmas and reusing things and giving things a new lease of life rather than just endlessly consuming new stuff, I'm going to get some chocolate coins and I'm going to get some little Christmas surprises and I'm going to stock up that little claw machine plug it in and have it all ready to go where their Christmas presents are on Christmas morning. I think sometimes we look for things that are going to look really impressive when they first walk down the stairs and see their presents and things that they'll feel instantly like really excited about. And that can cause us to buy stuff that is just shit really that is not going to stand the test of time and that is just going to clutter up our homes but this is a great example of like you buy it once and maybe every birthday and Christmas it could become your little tradition that you fill it up with like new little sweets or chocolates or treats and they get to like play with it all over again and that's the end of my kids suggestions the very last thing to mention you could give somebody the gift of an amazing 2024. I don't know anybody in my life that doesn't want to have an amazing year next year where they finally achieve their goals and live their very best life. And so you could get them a ticket for my New Year's goal setting party. This is my third year running this and I'm so excited about it. It's literally my favourite day of the year. You can join me at 8pm UK time on Saturday the 30th of December or if you can't make it live, you can watch a replay, it ain't no drama, where we are going to sit and plan out our 2024. Honestly, I've never achieved quite so much or felt so great about the year just gone since I've been doing this. Like I used to feel like the years were slipping by me and I was kind of wishing I'd do things, but I hadn't. And ever since I've been doing this, honestly, it's changed my fucking life. So if you want to come and join me for that, get a ticket for yourself. Maybe that could be your gift to yourself or get a ticket for a friend. You can find them at francescaamber.com. And the links for everything that I've mentioned in this episode are all going to be linked down below. And if you tap through those links, it helps your girl out. So please do shop through the links if you can. And that's the end of my gift guide. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know this is a bit of a departure from what we usually do, but I know this time of year, 
everyone's kind of scrabbling about frantically thinking what what do I get for the people in my life what should I do and I really feel like there's some little gems here that will make some people in your life really really happy I've got to say I'm feeling very very smug I actually started reading Calm Christmas at the beginning of November and one of the intentions that I set was that I would get all of my shit out the way. So all my Christmas shopping, all of my wrapping, all of that kind of stuff in November so that when my house was finished and December was here, the festive season, I've got quite a few like Christmas parties planned. I've got a weekend in London. I've got my girls all Christmas. I really wanted to just be present and enjoy it. And I didn't want to be bogged down with like all of the tasks that Christmas brings. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty fucking smug. I've done pretty much all of my Christmas shopping and I am about to start. It's going to be done. It's going to be wrapped by the 1st of December, which I've never, ever done in my life. So just excuse me while I sit over here feeling very, very smug about my life. Oh, come join me. Come join my brigade. And when December 1st comes, you're like, it's all done, bitch. It's all done. If you enjoy this podcast, please do rate, review, subscribe. Although I don't think they call it subscribe anymore. I think it's follow. Rate, review and follow. It really does help me out. And you can come and follow me on Instagram. I'm at Law of Attraction Changed My Life and at Francesca Amber. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you got some value from it. And please do let me know that you're listening. You can screenshot this podcast and share it on your stories. And I'll repost as many as you can if you tag me. Anyway, I'm off to prematurely prepare some more Christmas stuff. So (laughs) I'll see you later. The law of attraction has changed my life. It's going to change yours too, bitch. Bye.